As you may know, Elon Musk has plans to implement a method whereby a miniature computer is surgically implanted into the human brain. The first human implant technology trial will be carried out by Neuralink, Elon Musk's brain computer interface business this year in 2023. And that is just the beginning. Neuralink plans to expand quickly, implanting hundreds, thousands, and eventually millions of brains every year. To do that, the company will have to make their N1 implant device at a level that has never been done before in the brain-computer interface and neuroscience industries. Ten years ago, doubters would have countered that Tesla couldn't possibly produce a million electric vehicles in a single year, but they went above and beyond that in 2022. The same manufacturing techniques learned at Tesla can be used by Neuralink to scale up the same incredible levels, and this is how they go about it. Neuralink revealed that they had relocated the majority of their operations from California to Austin, Texas, where they had built a new facility specifically for device manufacturing during their show and tell live event in the late 2022. The main goal of this factory is to get their implants and related system quickly from prototype to mass production. We discovered that Neuralink has already made significant strides toward vertically integrating the production of its BCI technology, which means that the company is developing its own specialized internal process for producing essential elements of the implant procedure right down to the tiny electrode wire and the needles that insert them into the brain tissue instead of using commercially available parts and components. Since the Model 3 came out in 2017, Tesla has used the basic principle of vertical integration in its manufacturing. Rather than obtaining generic parts from an Asian factory, the company chose to manufacture as many of the car's parts as possible. Tesla thus manufactures everything, including electric motors, seats, window glass, and battery cells and modules. Even the software is entirely self-written by the business. In a Tesla, there is no Apple CarPlay. They have an exclusive operating system of their own. The advantage of this vertical manufacturing is that it enables quick testing and iteration. Therefore, if a component isn't performing as expected, you can change the design right away, test it, and change it again until the component is performing as expected. When you're bound by a contract with a supplier or purchasing off-the-shelf commercial goods, that isn't really possible. Because of this, at the Neuralink factory, their design engineers can be seen working on the actual manufacturing line to build and test the products in real time. This allows for a very quick iteration cycle time where the implant design can be completely changed in just a few days. All of this occurs in a highly regulated clean room setting. They are working with medical devices in addition to a very delicate electronics. The implant must, even at this early stage, meet requirements for human trials within six months and be secure for testing on live animals. It is a manufacturing environment with tightly controlled vibration, humidity, and particle counts that would be very similar to a semiconductor factory, also known as a FAB. Neuralink's manufacturing process includes a number of really intriguing features, including what they refer to as benchtop examination. Thus, as soon as the N1 implant device is complete, it is put into a testing rig on assembly line. They do this for a few different reasons. It goes without saying that they want to make sure that the new product they created works, charges, and communicates as it should. They can immediately feed the testing data back into the design process if anything doesn't check out, and all of this is taking place on the assembly line. Safety is another factor driving Neuralink's heavy investment in product testing. Everything they do revolves around this. Nothing ever leaves a bench top without being thoroughly tested before entering the body of a live animal subject. Neuralink prefers that all animal testing always be a confirmatory endeavor rather than an exploratory one. The artificial brain proxy that Neuralink uses to test the implant process has been refined over time. They began with a flat sheet of agar, a gelatin-like substance. To test a thread insertion robot, they have since upgraded to a composite hydrogel brain proxy. Additionally, the business extends that by subjecting its product to accelerated lifetime testing, which involves running the device through a hostile environment with high temperatures and aggressive movement before placing it in a simulated brain environment that replicates the chemistry of a brain tissue and body bodily fluids. They can obtain an acceleration factor of at least four times by inserting the implant device into this rig. As a result, four months on a live subject would be equivalent to one month on test rig. They can stress test a device in this way before implanting it. They are mainly looking for moisture to get into the device. Designers are always keeping an eye on implants' internal humidity. Over time, there will be a rise, but it will be very slight and gradual. 
Additionally, they want to monitor the batteries and the system's durability over time. The company has high-density testing racks and cabinets full of devices undergoing accelerated life testing at various stages. To prevent low-frequency edge case failures from occurring inside a human subject, they want to identify them. The intended lifespan of a neural link implant inside a person's skull is at least 20 years. The microfabrication of neural link's electrode wires was one of the procedures that they specifically discuss. These are the probes that are put right into to the cerebral cortex brain tissue. Currently, the N1 implant is connected to the brain using 64 different wires, each carrying 16 electrodes for a total of 1,024 communication channels. According to Neuralink, they make these wires using a thin film microfabrication process. They didn't go into detail about what that entails, but from a paper by Kristen K. Sellers published in the Journal of Neural Engineering in 2021 titled, Thin Film Microfabrication and Intraoperative Testing of Depth Arrays for Sense and Simulation, we can get an idea of the production processes. They discuss several different electrodes arrays for capturing and igniting brain activity in this article, including BCI control. While other preclinical research and non-FDA cleared designs are bringing that down to as little as 0.mm in size, which is the same ballpark as the neural inch propriety wire design which is even slimmer than human hair, we can see that FDA-approved commercial of the shelf electrode arrays will typically have an electrode diameter of between 2 and 4 centimeters. These tiny electrodes, according to the paper, have a core made of platinum iridium metal and are covered in a thin film by a compatible, non-reactive polymer. They begin with a silicon wafer, much like a semiconductor, and then layer of these thin films of polymer insulator and the plutonium electrode, rather than attempting to fabricate each individual wire. These films are only a few millions of a millimeter thick on the scale of micrometers. Then, using a photolithographic technique, the layered films are shaped by removing the material from a around the individual wires using a combination of lasers and chemical solvents. The flexible wires can be removed directly from the silicon backing once they have hardened and then inserted into the subject's brain by the Neuralink robot. They can also create multiple wire arrays at once on a single silicon wafer just like with microchips. Now, before we get any deeper into this interesting topic, please give a thumbs up if you are enjoying this video so far. And stay tuned until the very end to know more about Neurofactory. Since the neural link started the microfabrication process in 2021, the time it takes to make a new design of electrode threads has been cut in half. This means that they can iterate to a new design in just a few days. Neuralink has its own method for producing the needles that are inserted the electrodes into the cortex, carrying the vertical integration theme further. They do this using laser milling, which is similar to a CNC mill but has sub-micron accuracy. The tungsten wire needles that the Neuralink robot uses to pierce the brain tissue are only 40 microns wide. Also, the shape of the needle tip is very important because it must move the wire into the cortex and then release it perfectly before the needle quickly pulls back out of the skin like a sewing machine. Neuralink has spent the last two years testing different needle tip designs. Their in-house laser milling process lets them iterate a new design in less than an hour, milling one needle in just six minutes with a 91% success rate. A double operating room has also been incorporated by Neuralink into its first production facility. And based on the videos we saw, they have already set up operating tables in those spaces that are both human size and human shaped. As a result, not only are these devices designed, manufactured, and tested under one roof, but the first Neuralink recipients and brain surgeries on human patients will also take place in the Neurofactory. And that links back to the two main ideas we've been focusing on vertical integration and quick iteration. They can immediately enter the production line and make the precise changes required in real time if anything doesn't go as planned or performs at an optimal level. Safety, scalability, and access to the brain are thus Neuralink's three main tenets. Currently, ensuring that the device and the installation process are as safe as possible is the main priority. Scalability becomes as the main focus after safety is established in human trials, because many people will want it if this device is found to be safe. And to do that, they must be able to sell a lot of products for a reasonable price, a very effective manufacturing process needed for this. Neuralink wants to transition as quickly as possible from the safety verification stage to the volume production phase, which is why they are putting so much effort into that production line before they have been conducted a single human trial. In order to simultaneously design and test their prototype and improve their manufacturing process, they are operating both of these operations in parallel. It will appear to be taking a very long time for this product to develop, and it will, but this is a novel medical service. 
It needs to be tested and verified in great detail. The company will literally flip a switch and flood the market with its product once the FDA approves Neuralink for general use, going from hundreds of users to thousands to millions. And it will move quickly once it gets going. If everything goes according to Elon's plan, I think the world will be surprised at how quickly these brain implants become commonplace. Now, share your opinions on Neuralink with us. Are you anticipating the widespread use of this technology? Or are you still wary of Elon Musk implanting things in your brain? Please leave your opinion in the comment section below. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. I am Jules. Please subscribe to our channel for more technology updates and like and share this video. Now, if you want to know the latest update about the Cybertruck, click and watch the next video here.